Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ani Muradian. I hope everyone has as much energy as you had in the morning, which is impossible, but hopefully you're still awake. That alcohol has a dark side is not news, it's not surprising or a revolutionary idea. We all know that alcohol is correlated with various health issues. We know that it can affect our body by interfering with our sleep, by adding to our added sugar intake and therefore affecting our blood sugar levels affecting our blood pressure. It can also affect your digestive system. It affects our appearance, especially in the long run. Because alcohol dehydrates us, it also dehydrates our skin and rids it of vital vitamins and nutrients. Alcohol is related with various diseases. It increases our risk of seven types of cancer. Bowel cancer, breast cancer, liver cancer, laryngeal, mouth, pharyngeal, esophageal. And the risk is higher if you smoke as well. Drinking alcohol can also contribute to the conditions that increase your risk of developing diabetes and other heart and liver diseases. Alcohol affects our lifestyle. It affects our sports performance and fitness levels. Again, because it dehydrates us, it affects our urine levels and body temperature, which directly affects how well we can work out and our fitness performance. It also affects the way our body produces energy. For exercising, our body needs high levels of blood sugar, and the liver is not able to produce as much glucose when at the same time it's metabolizing alcohol. And finally, alcohol affects our mental health. Many people drink to overcome or ease stress, but actually studies show that alcohol increases, can contribute to feelings of depression and anxiety, and make it harder to deal with stress in the long run. Alcohol is a depressant, which means it slows down our brain and central nervous system functions, which slows down our decision-making skills and how fast we react. That's why a lot of us become impulsive when we drink. All of these adverse effects of alcohol at the end of the day also affect our relationships. Um, a lot of us know these. This is not news to anyone, but we don't necessarily think they apply to us when we drink. As a culture, we're not indifferent to alcohol. After all, it's our weddings that they refer to when they say there's no Armenian wedding if it doesn't end in a fight. As a culture, we drink, and for nearly the past century, we've been fixed on harder alcohols, vodka and brandy. As measured by the World Health Organization in 2016, um, alcohol consumption has gone up since 1990, with higher alcohol beverages increasing more than lower alcoholic beverages. 82% of our alcohol-consuming population over the age of 15 drink spirits, whereas beer is only the drink of choice for 11% and wine for 7%. Here's a quick overview of the health consequences of alcohol in Armenia in 2016, again, recorded by the World Health Organization. 70%, nearly 70% of deaths because of liver failure um, are attributed to alcohol for men and 34.7 for women. 26.1% of deaths from road traffic injuries are attributed to alcohol for men and 19.2 for women. And 5% of deaths from cancer are attributed to alcohol for men and 1.8 for women. And the general prevalence of alcohol use disorders in Armenia in 2016 was 5.7%, which is a bit lower than our regional average, but still, I think we can all agree that healthier alcohol use habits can benefit us all. Um, some of the ways that we can go towards help healthier alcohol habits as a society include education by teaching it in our schools and universities, having informational pamphlets and posters in doctor's offices, hospitals, public spaces with facts and safety knowledge about alcohol, use it correctly. I will touch upon in a bit how the government can be involved. Um, some of the traditional methods for dealing with and interve intervening with alcoholism and treating alcoholism have been Alcoholics Anonymous groups and rehabilitation centers, both of which require complete abstinence. An alternative method is alcohol harm reduction. Harm reduction is an umbrella term for interventions that aim to reduce the problematic behaviors of certain conditions. They also help to decrease the risk for developing problematic behaviors. Alcohol harm reduction is a non-judgmental approach that attempts to meet people where they are at with their drinking or drug use. The objective is to be supportive of anyone who wishes to minimize the harm associated with their drinking in this case, instead of demanding perfect abstinence. So alcohol harm reduction therapy would essentially help someone reach their goals of safer drinking, reduced drinking, or quitting if that is their goal. I'm going to propose that wine is the answer for safer drinking. Um, I believe, and what I'm proposing is not meant as a solution for alcoholism, because too much of anything is never okay. And any health benefits I will talk about apply only to moderate drinking. And moderate drinking is one drink per day for women and two for men. Sorry women, it's just anatomy. Um, some of the ways, how do we get people to drink more wine? 
or drink wine instead? Well, one, our ancestors did it. We're one of the oldest winemaking and wine drinking nations in the world. The vine was first cultivated by people in this region of the earth. Wine is deeply embedded in our culture and it is something to be proud of. Next, and most importantly, it's a healthier alternative to other drinks. And finally, I believe that wine awareness and wine drinking culture can change the way people think about drinking in general to a healthier perspective. Centuries ago, wine was used to treat medical health conditions. Medieval monasteries believed that their monks lived much longer than the rest of the population because of their moderate but regular consumption of wine. Since then, science has shown that this is probably true. Wine, and red wine especially, has been studied extensively, and evidence suggests that moderate consumption can uh, uh, contribute to living longer, help protect against certain cancers, improve mental health, and enhance heart rate heart health. Um, and the main uh, key player in all these health benefits is resveratrol. It's a chemical compound found in a group of compounds called polyphenols. Polyphenols act as antioxidants and protect the body against damage that can make you at higher risk for de developing heart and liver diseases. Resveratrol and polyphenols are found in the grape skin. They're also found in peanuts and berries. I'm going to suggest that wine so snobbery uh, can help convert our society to, a, to healthier drinking habits. Wine snobbery, I'm referring to the way wine lovers and wine connoisseurs drink wine. We don't call it wine snobbery, but other people call us wine snobs for being so uh, detailed about wine, but I'll explain it in a second. Um, wine for wine lovers is a process, it's not a drink. And people, when they're drinking wine, they take time to look at the color, uh, judge the hue of the color, discover the aromas, the first layer of aromas, second and third layer of aromas. They think about the winemaking techniques that might have been used based on how the wine tastes or feels. They do this because they're aware that wine is a complex creation, not a product. And most winemakers will go so far as to say that wine is art, and I definitely agree. But what this means is that they're aware of the process that goes from grape to glass. They're aware that the grape growing on one type of soil uh, compared to a different type of soil or growing in one region versus another region can affect the way a wine tastes. And all of this awareness forces the wine drinker to take their time and appreciate the wine. When you appreciate the process, you appreciate the wine. When you appreciate the wine, you take your time. When you take your time, you drink less. You never see people drink taking shots of wine. Um, I believe and I think that this is the case that going to healthier con alcohol consumption habits is a two-way responsibility between the producer and government, besides what the individual can do and the choices you can make. On the producer side, uh, they have to try to produce as harmless a product as possible. For example, in winemaking, there are many steps that the winemaker can choose to be less harmful. Um, for example, at Vineyards, we use organic fertilizers, which we make from uh, the leftover grapes, skin, seeds, and stems. In the winery, hygiene is the most important rule, the first and most important rule, because wine is very sensitive to the environment. Every piece of equipment gets washed properly according to its instructions for washing. And finally, in the bottle, wine doesn't have any additives. Uh, proper wine should not. A, lot, a lack of wine knowledge forces people to ask us questions like, do you add the aroma or do you add the color? The answer is no, if it's a proper wine. There are some steps that the government, that government can take to convert to healthier alcohol habits um, as a people. And a good example of this is the strategy that the UK implemented countrywide in 2005. Some of the strategies they have listed include improving health and treatment services. For example, training staff better in hospitals or doctor's offices to recognize signs of alcohol misuse. And not just in uh, hospitals, but perhaps in psychologists' offices or in schools even to see, notice these signs among parents or maybe even young adults. The government can also issue a countrywide uh, communication strategy for sensible drinking and spread it effectively. Better education and communication, teaching it in schools, and uh, that was the countrywide strategy I refer to that fell under communication. Working with the producer, with the alcohol industry, um, they can pass laws or charters to demand or expect producers to work in a socially responsible and ethical way. For example, by not advertising to young drinkers or not encouraging uh, unsafe drinking habits. 
Combating alcohol-related crime and disorder, things like making uh, the fines stricter for serving uh, underage drinking, or having more strict uh, history of who caused trouble in the bar and club and not allowing them to return. In sum, these are some of the res resources. You can email me later and to see you know, the studies or the articles if any of it interests you. In sum, I believe that uh, awareness of and knowledge of the harms of alcohol and of the healthier alternatives and life choices, uh, the need for intervention will be less and we'll all live in a happier and healthier society. Thank you.